Oh, what's up guys? Justin here with the Fusion Essentials. So in today's video, we're going to talk a little bit about the power of using the design history in Fusion 360 and how it can help you make changes and adjustments. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so one of the most powerful tools inside of Fusion 360 is the ability to save what you've been doing inside of the program so that you can change it later. So let's say we were to model a very simple shape. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of cut off a corner on this object right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude this to 3D. And it doesn't really matter what your shape is. We're just going to model something. And I want to make sure that it has a few steps in here. So I'm just going to make sure that I've created a new body. And then I'm going to use the mirror function in order to take that body and create some other pieces in here. So we're just going to do, whoops, we're just going to do another mirror right here. We'll mirror it across the surface and then we'll add a little bit of detail in the middle. So I'm just going to add another sketch and notice how I'm just kind of going through steps in order to create things, right? Design and creation usually contains a number of different steps inside of it. So now, for example, I might come in here and I might fill it off these edges like this. I'm going to do the same thing to these edges like this. And then I'm going to take this object and I'm going to mirror it. So I'm just going to create a mirror to mirror this across the surface. And I'm going to click on OK. And so what we've done is we've created this kind of like simple shape in here. You know, it's got these kind of bigger holes in it and really it's two pieces kind of put together, but we've made some mistakes creating this object. And so in a lot of 3D modeling programs, you'd be kind of stuck in the sense that um, you can't really go back and make changes. Luckily, Fusion 360 actually saves your steps. So notice how there's a timeline down here at the bottom of the page that I could actually use to move backwards in my process. So notice I can use this little slider and I can move forward and backward, which is really cool for a lot of different reasons. So for example, you can move to the beginning and then you could play this and it's actually going to show you an animation of that object being created right here. So just from like a construction animation standpoint, this is pretty cool. Um, but more practically, you can actually step into the process in the past and you can make changes and adjustments. And so, for example, if I was to step back in my process, remember that what I did is I used this to mirror objects across here, but then I added this object right here on the top as well. Well, remember that because of the way that we did this, it joined this all into a singular body. Maybe I don't want this top piece to be joined in with the body right here. Maybe I want that to be separate. Well, what I can do is I can come in here and I can edit that feature and I can change the operation. So if I don't want this to be added as a part of that original body, I can just go back and change that in my timeline. Well, now if I click on OK and I look at the bodies, Notice how on the top and the bottom, these have now been generated as their own separate parts and pieces, but the overall process has stayed the same. So that's really powerful because that gives you the ability to make those changes in a very parametric way. And so right here, for example, on this mirror feature, I want to do the same thing. I want this top plate and this bottom plate to be new bodies as well. So now when I click on that, Notice how I now have a top body and a bottom body in here, and these are completely separated, giving me the ability to like toggle the different parts and pieces on and off inside of my scene right here. So you can use this timeline to go back and make changes to things that you've created really quickly. And so you could also come back in here and you could edit this sketch if you wanted to do that. So I could take this circle and I could scale it down a little bit. So I'm going to scale it based on this point right here. I'm going to scale it so that it's half the size that it was before. I'm going to hit the enter key and then I'm going to click on finish. Well, notice how these actually came back and these changed based on the fact that I changed the sketch that was in here. So this can be a massive 
time saver for making changes in Fusion 360. And note that you can turn this on and off by clicking on the button right here and selecting the option for do not capture design history. In general, I would say don't do that. Um, I think that's a bad idea. I think keeping the design history is a good idea. Assuming that um, you don't have a massive file, this can get a little bit slow, I think, if you have a bunch of design history in here. But in general, you're going to want to capture that. All right, so that's where I'm in this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you knew about this, if you've used it. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.